RPA stands for recombinase polymerase amplification and it's an isothermal alternative to the polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Due to its isothermal nature, it can be taken out of the lab and put into unusual locations and into the hands of people who are not molecular biologists. People have used RPA to detect the plague, anthrax, testing for foot and mouth in cattle, testing for the MERS virus, screening for cancer drugs. People are also using RPA to look for GM crops. There's a number of people looking at using RPA to detect plant pathogens. It's also been used for a number of different food safety tests. So people have looked at salmonella and listeria. People are going to be using RPA for microfluidics. They're going to be running DNA on their electronic chips. The great thing about RPA is that it could make a difference in so many places food testing and agriculture and human diagnostics. But the potential for it is almost limitless. If you need a quick test, it's kind of the thing that you want to use. At the heart of it is that RPA, in contrast to PCR, is an enzymatic method in which the thermal hybridization step uh, that in PCR guides the oligonucleotide primer to its binding site in the template is replaced by a step that is facilitated by a particular enzyme, or what's called a recombinase, that interacts with the oligonucleotide primers uh, and uh, helps the primer to find its target site within the template. So unlike other isothermals, you're not constrained to only amplifying a very short fragment of DNA or RNA. You can also amplify one, two kilobases, so big, big chunks of DNA so that you can clone it, and that's just not possible with any other isothermal. But the really, really cool thing about RPA is that it works at a whole range of temperatures. People have done studies that are published that say that they could get it to work all the way down to sort of 25 degrees, which is about room temperature. It's amazing how well it works and how sensitive it is and how actually how robust it is and how reliably we can get it to work on the targets that we try and look for. So you can take RPA places where you can't take PCR. One of the most exciting developments was when the RPA technology had been employed by a consortium of clinicians and academic researchers to support a project that was run during the 2015 Ebola outbreak. These researchers had taken our technology, developed an assay for the uh, detection of the Ebola virus and employed this biochemistry in a context which is highly adaptable to the point of use directly in the field. And that was very satisfying for us to see because it shows the use of the RPA technology in a very important environment and a very important context. RPA reactions are really simple to set up and run. You just open the box and you take the reactions out, you add your template, you add your primers, put it in the incubator, 10 minutes later you should have an answer. I think RPA is a game-changing technology. At the moment RPA is being used by everything from academics to pharma companies to biotech companies to government laboratories. We're open to licensing the technology, we can make custom reactions for people. We're here to help and get the technology out there. One of the great things about RPA is that we don't know what people are going to do with it. The fact that it works at body temperature, it's isothermal, it's so easy to do, it means that people are going to do things with this that we haven't thought of. And we really want people to get out there and use it and to, to unwind the potential of DNA amplification using RPA.